no, it's not a problem, but yes, he's still ends up getting his ass hit, and his ass handed, it, handed out to him within the first couple minutes of the battle. Can't say that I expected that to happen. Hello, all, and welcome to Nurtaku, and I'm your host, Lee Junibert. In case you're just joining us for the first time and you don't know what Nurtaku is, Nurtaku is going to be my new weekly series where I go delve into the world of anime and appreciate it, discuss it, and basically review it. Non-scripted, of course. It's going off of my ideas. And today we're talking about Shout Factory's and Toy Animation's reappearance of Digimon Tri. Digimon Adventure Tri is a sixth movie miniseries, you might as well say, where six movies combined into one that makes one epic tale of the future of the Digidestined. In case you don't know what Digimon is, or you're not associated with the culture at all, Digimon was an anime that started in the 90s and worked its way pretty much well up into about the 2000, I would say 2014, 15 area. And then suddenly it started calling down until 2017 when Digimon Adventure Try came out. Digimon Adventure Try is like a Digimon get together, a reunion. They bring back so many of the original voice cast, they bring back some what was like the original animation quality for it. I mean, they just did a great job. So it's been years after we last saw the Digi Dust End, and everybody's been out on doing their own thing. They're graduating from school now. They have to try to figure out what to do when they graduate school. And lo and behold, there was a new Digimon coming out called Infected Digimon. And of course, the first that it's infected is the original <clears throat> Digimon that they fought in the first episode, Kuwagamon. Now, when this all happens, <clears throat> um, you know, when this all happens at first, being the hero that he is, Tai tried to take the Digimon away from it, but noticing that that's not possible, and so somehow through his spirit, he calls for the Agumon. Now, Izzy tells everybody later that the, especially when the Digijet can come back together according to the government, we don't know much about that at the moment, but when Izzy tells them that everything that's happening, including what Tai figured out later on by talking to an agent that is actually a teacher at their school, they notice that there's a lot more of like um, interruptions. There are a lot more different things happening in the world, and that the Digimon aren't coming through the gate like they used to. They're coming out basically through things controlled by the internet. So think ATMs, uh, cash registers, computers, cell phones. They're starting to interfere with all that, and the more interference, the bad, the worse off that it is. So, you know, the Digimon try to do everything that they can and introduce two, three different characters. One is a new Digimon known as Alphamon, and let me tell you, that dude just is basically Dio Brando if he was a Digimon. I'm not even kidding. Uh, basically, he just flattened out everybody within the first couple minutes, and then before being destroyed by Amimon, he d disappears. Yeah, it's like, uh, wimp. And then we have two new characters introduced to the Destined, but who play a bigger role in Digimon Adventure Try, but as far as I know for the first movie, not much. Uh, the first character of this is, of course, Mako. Mako is a transfer student. She just got transferred into, um, the, into the school. She just got transferred into where they are. And basically, she kind of seems like me. She's very awkward, very awkward social. And she doesn't really get everything together in her life. And then there's also Meikumon. Meikumon is a cat-like Digimon, sort of like Gabumon. She is introduced into the movie, and we don't know anything about her just yet. Just that her and Alphamon have sort of like a thing. Um, because she looked at Alphamon when he first appears, and then maybe she kind of rejects him, but she can't in some way. So there's, n there's nothing that says it. Also, so far, uh, there had been a few different things that I've noticed that it's new, and I hope that it gets resolved pretty soon. Izzy and me, Izzy has a crush on Mimi, Mimi has a crush on Izzy, and it's like, aww. You know, it, you, it's always a couple that you never think of, you know. And also, there is a love triangle going on between Thor, Ty, and Matt, which I think is just adorable. Everything, it basically made me smile, the nerdiest smile ever, um, in this, because the voice actors, all the original voice actors for the Digimon are back, um, there is some different inclusions in the voice actor territory, but, you know, there is a moment in here where Ty has to, 
uh, evolve Agumon again. And he can't do that because he thought of the consequences that they now have. See, back when the original Digimon happened, there was no consequences, basically. They were in a digital world. It was in a world of basically a make-believe. And in the real world, there are consequences. There are things that happen. There are people who get hurt. So, he doesn't take this into consideration until later on in the anime, where he remembers, you know, I have to be a hero, I have to save everybody, but there's so many consequences. And I love that, because especially as a comic book reader, there are so many moments in comic books where the superhero has to stop and remember, oh yeah, I have a, de I have a destined job to do in protecting people, but I have to put others on the line before myself, and I thought that was beautifully put together. This is a reunion for Digimon Fanalites and also this was put out by Shout Factory. So Shout Factory basically got their hands on every Saban brand, every Saban entertainment brand. And I always forgot that Saban were the people and the company behind Digimon. Somehow I forgot that down the line. So yeah, they done Shout Entertainment done VR Troopers, Power Rangers, Beetleborgs. <clears throat> And I even think the Knights of Kira Nog, if I'm not mistaken, if anybody remembers that. They probably even done Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. And maybe at some point they might do Teenage Mutant Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. I'm such a nerd, I know. But anyways, this is Digimon Adventure Try, and so far for the first uh, movie, it's not everything I hoped it would be. Um, if I can be honest, it was slacking in a lot of areas, and this was just, it was great, it was a great anime, don't get me wrong, but, um, there's just so many moments where they're really kind of slacking, and it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, hopefully that they buy the second movie that they picked up. This movie is slow, I grant you, because it does not pick up until towards the one hour mark, and that just goes to show you how slow it is. Even when the Digimon fight Kawagamon, it ends so quickly and ends so abruptly that you don't get any more Digimon action until towards the end of the movie. Which, it, to me, kind of sucks because Digimon used to be a show where it used to rely mostly on the Digimon fighting every season. And I've seen every season. But this one, just kind of like, we need to have as much exposition as possible so we can get people up to speed, including new viewers. And then we'll give you the Digimon action. Oh, Digimon Adventure Try, you better be good to me. I, I swear. I still have five more movies to watch, so... More at me, children. It's a lot like JoJo, in a way, because it's basically just like one arc that or, that came off of another arc, basically. <clears throat> because you know how Stardust Crusaders is an arc towards uh, Diamond is Unbreakable? Yeah, this kind of feels that same way, that it's sort of like, you know, it's, a, it's kind of the same thing, just started started Crusaders going into Diamond and Unbreakable, we get a lot of more of the cast, I know that a lot of uh, JoJo lines branch off into each other, but, um, yeah, this does kind of feel like Diamond is Unbreakable, and hopefully it won't be as crappy as I probably intend to, because if it's a sack of shit, it's gonna be make me the most difficult and angry person ever. Hopefully that won't be so. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching this episode of Notaku. Remember that I do a new review every Monday, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But anyways, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you see you next time on the next installment of Notaku. Until next time, remember to watch anime and appreciate it. Until next time.